Hey, so, um, it's like one in the morning, so I'm gonna try it and not talk very loud. But I just finished Shatter Me by Tara Mafi. This book was great. I liked it a lot. I'm gonna give it a four out of five stars. Um, I'm excited to see where the series goes. I have a lot to talk about with this book, and I'm excited to talk about it. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, um, Warner, I love Warner. He's such a great bad guy, and I love fantastic and unpredictable bad guys. So I'm excited to see more of him. I love Juliet. She's an amazing character, and I will get to her more, and I'll get to her relationship with Adam, and I'm excited to talk about this book, so I will get on with the review, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Hey guys, it's me Jessica, and today I'm talking about Shatter Me by Tahara Mafi. I finished this book like two days ago, and I absolutely loved it. It was so great. I am giving it a four out of five stars though, because like I liked it, but and like it's on the border of love it, but I'm not overly obsessed with it. Like, oh my god, I have to grab the next book, though I kind of do want to grab the next book. I know how I want to describe how I feel about this book, but it's just that it, it involves spoilers, so I can't really talk about it with in this non spoiler section. So I'm just gonna get on. I'm just gonna get on to the synopsis or like the overview and my like final thoughts about it and then we'll go into the spoiler and then I'll tell you guys. So uh, I'm gonna give this book a four to five stars. The main character net a uh, main character's name is Juliet and she starts out in this kind of asylum. She's in a prison and she's the only person in there. She only has a small window and a bed and a notebook in which she like writes in, obviously. And one day she gets a cellmate and it is a boy and Juliet has the ability where she can hurt people and also kill people with just her touch so of course like things start to happen and then she's taken out of her cell and she discovers the world and it's like some other things happen as well and it's really it's a really great story a it's a really great story, especially for Juliet and her discovering, you know, the outside world and how messed up it is and her, like, adapting to it. It's a fantastic story. I love it a lot. Um, so yeah, my final thoughts, I love the writing. The writing is very poetic and if you can't tell from um, the front and also the back, there are sections that are crossed out throughout the story. It's a very creative way of writing and I like it a lot, especially with the the poetic sense of writing it has. It's great. Um, characters are really great. I'm a huge fan of characters and character development. That's like the two things that I love in books because you can have a great plot but if you have like one dimensional characters and, and they don't progress and are affected by the things in the plot then they're not great characters and that just makes your book not very good in my eyes. Um, but Shatter Me has great characters and I'm excited to see where they go and how they adapt. So yeah, uh, 4 out of 5 stars for the insta-lovey type, kind of. It's like, it's like insta-lovey but I feel like it's slightly justified and I'll get to that in the spoiler section which I'm actually now gonna go into. It's great, I love it, I highly recommend this book. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go into the spoilers. So this book, I like this book kind of the way I like the Grisha trilogy and that's with Elena, um, Alina, Alina, Mal, and uh, the Darkling, like that trilogy, um, that's the kind of the way I feel about Shatter Me, like, except for the, the difference is I like Juliet more than I like Alina in um, the Grisha trilogy because Alina annoyed me at I like Juliet a lot and I'll get to more how much I love Juliet once I'm done talking about my comparison of the two. Uh, just about, not like in the story, but how I feel about them. They're very similar. I love the bad guy. The Dark Alina is amazing. Warner is fantastic. He's so unpredictable and like you don't know how he's gonna react. Like when he, uh, when he touches uh, Juliet for the first time, he's like, 
he's so sincere about it. He's like, you didn't think I'd notice, and it's all this, he's like so sincere even though he he's crazy, he's psychotic, and he's like obsessed with Juliet, and I, I just, I love that. I love how unpredictable he is, and there's the best characters. I, I've talked about my character, Silas. Silas is such an unpredictable character, so I'm very fond of those type of bad guys. Um, and then there's Adam. Adam is like Mal, um, where I don't really like them, but like I understand why the main character is with them. You know what I mean? Like Adam, Adam is very like, he's the protector type. Like I have to protect my brother. I have to protect Juliet. I have to, you know, keep like, I have to guard all this stuff, I have to fight, that type of thing, and besides his brother and besides his feelings for Julia, I feel like he doesn't have any more reasons to fight, you know what I mean? I don't know, I just feel like I need more of Adam's backstory or just more, like, Adam development to really appreciate him because I'm not, I'm not appreciating him as much I feel like he should be. And that's how I felt with Mal. I was like, Mal, you're like slightly annoying. I feel like you're too good. They're, they're just those characters. I, I need Adam to mess up. Like, that's what I need. I need him to mess up and bounce back from that and become stronger. That's what I need from Adam. And hopefully that happens in the next two books. So yeah. And then Julia. Julia's amazing because she has all the makings of a villain. She has all the makings of, the ba of a bad guy. I mean, her whole entire life she was antagonized, she was uh, villainized because of her touch, because of her abilities. And she still sees good in people, she still sees good in herself, and she tries the best person she can be, even though she can kill people with her touch. And there's one thing that always goes through my mind, it's like one of my favorite quotes, and I really need to like write it down and just like stick it somewhere, but it's from the Mara Dyer trilogy, and it's, um, you can heal the wrong person and be the villain, or you could kill the right person and be the hero. So I really, I really wanna, I just wanna tell Juliet that I just wanna like hold her and hug her and be like, everything will be okay, you beautiful child. I feel like there wasn't a lot of development for her because she was so strong in the first place, even though she thought she was insane, like she thought she couldn't handle these things and they're thrown at her and she's like, this is practically how my life has been, I can handle this type thing. And I, you know, like you don't realize how strong she is and she doesn't even realize how strong she is until she's in that situation where she needs that strength. And I'm not talking about her abilities, I'm just talking about like emotionally strong. This is what I love about Juliet. She's so, she's such a great character. Like, I love it so much. So, alright, I guess I should talk about the reason I'm giving it 4 out of 5 stars, and that's just because of the setting and how I didn't get, for me personally, I didn't get enough description of the setting to really appreciate it. Her walking into the hotel, that was very descriptive, you know, because she's kind of having this mental breakdown where she sees the marble floor and she's like, people died for this floor and she sees the the like crystal chandelier and she's like orphans have like there have been orphans created so the chandelier could be there type thing you know like people have sacrificed things for for people who are un ungrateful for it and I and yeah and I that was that was a great scene and all but like when she was walking outside it it didn't I didn't really get enough of the 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 setting to really visualize it completely and I understand, like, the world is supposed to, like, the weather is unpredictable and the world's supposed to be barren and the, the, the neighborhoods are supposed to be destroyed type thing, but I just, I needed a little more description of it to really fully appreciate the setting. That's, that's, the world building wasn't the best, that's all I have to say. And I believe this is, um, Tahara's first, like, her debut novel, and that's understandable, because as a writer myself, world building is very difficult to do, so I understand that completely. But I just, I just wish there was more. Like, for my own preferences to visualize things, I wish there was more. That's all I have to say. I want to talk about Kenji, because I thought Kenji, and I don't want to be stereotypical and saying because, like, he's Asian, that he was supposed to be, like, this nerdy kid, but the way people talk about Kenji, I always thought that he was that kind of, like, slightly nerdy kid that was the lighthearted character that became friends with Juliet. That's, that's how I saw Kenji before I read this book. 
this book is not even what I expected it to be, I'm just gonna say that right now. Um, but he's not, he's, he's uh, very handsome and he is kind of a pervert and he's very flirty. Not how I pictured Kenji, but I'm excited to see Kenji and Juliet become friends because he can turn invisible, which like makes him the perfect spy. No wonder he was like put in to, in Warren's sector when they were looking for Juliet. So yeah, I, I'm excited to see more about Kenji. Um, he he defied my expecta expectations, and I don't know if in a good way or not. Um, so I want to talk about Warner. I love Warner. Like when they kiss, oh my god, I was like yes, yes, yes. I love it a lot. I love that kind of like the the he's like psychotic. He's definitely something's wrong. Like he obviously has mommy issues because like no one ever talks about his mother. So I was just so excited to see his character continue. I'm excited for this series to keep going, which it has, and I'm gonna read all of them because I have all of them. Um <laughs> I really don't know what to say. I uh, someone's told me there is like a novella of, uh, like from Warner's point of view, or there's like a story from Warner's point of view, and I'm like excited to read that. I'm gonna find that. I'm gonna read it. Um, yeah. So what I said when I was talking about Kenji that Kenji was not who I thought he was gonna be because I've heard so much about this book. I've like built it up in my head that it was gonna be something, and then I read it and it was not that at all. And, you know, sometimes that's not a bad thing. It's not your novel, so you can't really, like, know what's gonna happen. Um, but I just kinda, like, thought I knew it was gonna happen. Because I thought what was gonna happen was, uh, Julia was gonna be sell, then she gets- then Adam comes in and Adam helps her escape from the asylum, and then she, they get, like, captured by Warner type thing. But it, that's so not what happened at all. It was kind of reversed. Like, she meets Adam, gets caught by Warner, and then her and Adam escape. So yeah. I want to talk about their relationship, um, Adam and Juliet, because they knew each other from school and they've like had crushes on each other, but the thing is, the thing that gets me that makes this story more insta-lovey than it has like reason to be is they never talked to each other. I'm like, they should have at least talked, like had a moment where they spoke to each other and then like Juliet was taken away. I think that would have been a lot better because it's like they had crushes on each other and they really cared about each other but they never spoke to each other and then he just like he was in love with her that whole time and she was in love with him that whole time and it was it was a little ridiculous it was a little ridiculous and I was not a fan of that um but I think they're adorable the part where they kiss, he like kisses her neck. I'm like, why aren't you kissing her face? Like, what are you doing, Adam? Kiss her on the face. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was ridiculous. <laughs> I think they're like an adorable couple. And I really like how Juliet doesn't believe that he loves her. So she like keeps asking him like, why do you care? And it's such an appropriate reaction to someone who's been isolated like their whole entire life and who's been antagonized their whole entire life. It's such a great like response to like of disbelief and having to ask multiple times, why do you care? Um, why do you love me? Why are you why are you here? I like that a lot. I like her reaction to that. It's it's great. And I like how she doesn't want to be a monster and even though like you they warn her. <laughs> The part where Warner makes her pick up a child because they're in the room with the spikes. Oh my gosh, I was so pissed at him. But I want to know more about Juliet's abilities because not only can she hurt people, but she can break through walls. Like, she has super strength. I have no clue what her abilities are and I'm excited to see about them. Um, the healing twins are creepy. I don't trust Omega Point. I don't trust Castle. I don't... I, I just... I don't trust them at all. I feel they're... They're gonna use Juliet, like, they're gonna teach her how to use her powers, and she's gonna be grateful that, for that, and then they're gonna try and use her. And she's, she's too smart to let them do that. So I, I don't fear for Juliet, but I don't trust Omega Point at all, whatsoever. Like, Juliet just needs to be by herself and figuring things out and figuring out how to fight her way, because I don't feel like she's had time to really stop and and think. You know? You know what I mean? Yeah. And Juliet, not knowing her appearance, that kind of annoyed me, but also it was understandable. Like, she hasn't looked in a mirror for three years. But it's like, how am I supposed to 
visualize Juliet in my head if I don't know how she looks. Like, you are not helping me out at all. I'm like, how is this character supposed to look in my head? Like, I know how Adam looks, I know how Warner looks, but what does Juliet look like? She's like, she obviously has brown hair, and they're like blue or green eyes. I'm like, what, what is the color of her eyes? Like, what is her complexion? But I think that's also a great thing about it because like, then anyone can visualize it, so like obviously me I'm a white girl I'm going to obviously visualize, uh, visualize Juliet as a white woman um and like Middle Eastern woman can do the same reading this book and it's I like how it's also up for interpretation but I, I very do much like defined character descriptions how does Juliet look <laughs> So I guess that's all I'm going to talk about for Shatter Me. Please give this video a like if you liked it. Also make sure to comment down below. Grace, comment because we did this as a buddy read. And <laughs> yeah, um, when Grace comes out with her review, I will link it down in the description. Also make sure to subscribe and if you want to, you can ring that bell as well. I try not to rhyme it, but it always rhymes, so I'm just going to go with it. So ring that bell as well. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. So I like literally just came back from work and like, oh my god, crazy, crazy, I got it, I got it. I got it. Oh my god. So I'm gonna open it right now. This is hard to do one hand, but I have it. Oh my god, I have it. You are the best. Like, you were literally the best, Grace. Like, okay, give me a second. <laughs> oh, okay. You got me up. Makeup all over it. No, oh, look at the best. <laughs> Thank you, Grace. <laughs>